Welcome everyone to JWP Tech Broadcast. What I'm actually going to be doing here is going through a graphics card buyer's guide. What I'm actually going to focus on is different price points and different resolutions that you may be gaming on from 1080p all the way up to, four, to uh, 1440p and getting into a little bit of 4K. That being said, there's many different graphics cards out there that you can actually go about purchasing in different price brackets, uh, depending on what your needs are. So I'm going to try to hit a few uh, key points on each uh, resolution that you may be gaming on and just pick some cards that I would personally choose. And hopefully this is uh, helpful to you guys uh, in the future. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is uh, the more budget oriented, the 1080p. And the 1080p is actually a good place to start and that that's what most people are gaming on. And if you're gaming on a TV, which I do sometimes, especially games like FIFA or NBA or uh, even uh, Skyrim is a really cool game to actually play on a TV from your PC. So we're gonna start at the cheapest end of things. I'm gonna uh, recommend the GTX 750 Ti. This is currently selling for under $100 and I would actually go and get the uh, ASUS model. I believe it's the Strikes. I don't know if that's exactly what it's called, but it's a direct CU2 cooler. Uh, it runs extremely cool, quiet. It'd be great if actually if you're doing it for a second PC and you just want to hook it up to your TV uh, for any type of streaming or uh, light gaming, uh, especially games like Diablo and uh, Skyrim, things like that that don't require a heavy amount of CPU like a Crisis 3. So when we're stepping up for budget here, I want to focus on is if you're playing some more of the more demanding titles, Crisis 3, uh, Metro Last, Last Life, uh, Battlefield, um, there's all kinds of different other games out there that require a little bit more out of your GPU than others might. Uh, even Civilization, which is kind of a CPU intensive game, can also be extremely demanding on your GPU. And I went with two different cards here. First, I'm going to go with the AMD side, the R7. Uh, 370. This is has two gigabytes of memory, and it's running us about 140 bucks. Uh, various models are running around the 135, 145 price point. Uh, this would be a great uh, GPU, especially if you're not uh, looking to get into the Nvidia side of things in the H.265 encoder, which is kind of important if you want to do any type of streaming. But if you're really wanting to stretch your budget out, this is probably the best card for you for that price point. If you want to step up a little bit, I'm going to recommend G uh, NVIDIA's new GTX 950. The big thing about this is that it's got an H.265 encoder already built into the GPU. So you can do a lot of live streaming to where it's not going to affect your CPU at all. And that's going to run us $170. If you wait a few weeks, it may actually go down in price uh, because it was just released. It's got the new Maxwell architecture, so you're getting a brand new car, 2 gigabytes of memory is all you're going to need for 1080p. So that's what I'd recommend. For that price point. Now for a little bit bump up in price if we're going to do some high demanding 1080p and maybe jump into uh, maybe doing a few titles in 1440p if you maybe just got a 1440p monitor. Uh, the first one I'm going to recommend is the actually the MSI GTX 960 and mainly because this card is currently running like 165 bucks. There's different models out there you can get for close to $200. But for under $200, you're going to get a 960, which is a great card, especially at high demanding titles at 1080p and maybe getting into some 1440p and bumping a few settings down. Uh, another card to actually get into is I chose the XFX version of this, but you could choose other versions is the R9 380. This does have four gigabytes of memory, so it's going to be better suited for 1440p if you want to step into that price point. And that's going to run us at $210. They have different models out there if you want to go with an Asus or Gigabyte. Uh, but I really like the XFX, the design of the card that was actually there. I'll put some pictures up of the cards I'm, cho I'm choosing here. But for 1440p, an introduction in a 1440p, that's actually what I would choose. Uh, if you're mainly focused on 1080p and maybe want to jump into 1440p in the near future. Now I'm going to focus on standard 1440p. If that's what you're gaming on and that's what your needs are going to be for the next couple years, these are the two cards I would actually recommend. The first would actually be the GTX 970. And I would recommend this from the B stock, which is Nvidia's uh, kind of the refurbished or maybe slightly used or tested graphics cards. And you can get a 970 right now for $260. Comes with four gigabytes of memory and it's gonna be able to do about anything you want at 1440p and not have any problems. There's gonna be a few higher demanding titles that you may have to bump down a little bit. But honestly, this is the only card I would actually recommend uh, right now at uh, that uh, standard budget 1440p graphics card. If you want a new one, you can get one for about $300. Uh, I've seen them from $299 to $310, depending on what type of deal or how much time frame you have to actually look for a deal. 
but I really like the H.265 encoder because you can do live streaming, and I believe anyone that's probably doing a 1440p display may do some live streaming in the future, and it's really helpful because it really doesn't put a load on your CPU. You can have the graphics card do that in the background and not have any problems. I'm gonna jump into the more expensive 1440p graphics cards and possibly getting into some 4K gaming. The first one is gonna be more on the budget-oriented side of things. It's actually gonna be on the AMD, one of their new cards, which is the 390X. And I really like the uh, Sapphire card. Um, I'll put a picture of it up somewhere, but it's got a three fan design. You can overclock the crap out of this. It has eight gigabytes of memory, which is a 512 memory bus that uh, is a new design, new uh, memory from AMD that we don't really know a whole lot about if it's gonna affect actually the performance of your gaming and improve it at all, because uh, DirectX 12 is not quite out yet. It may affect it in the future, but that card's running us at $400, $399. It probably will come down in price as time goes on, but this will be a great starter if you want to do some light for 4K gaming. It's not going to be as beefy as the next card I'm going to recommend, but it's also much cheaper, $260 cheaper actually. That being said, let's jump into what I would consider the go-to if you definitely are going to do 4K gaming, and that is a GTX 980 Ti. I would personally go with the ASUS Strikes model, mainly because it already comes with a backplate and it's over. you can overclock the crap out of this thing, it runs cool, it has zero decibel fan option if you're doing any type of light gaming on maybe some old titles that won't quite need to ramp up uh, those fans to cool the card down. It just run us at $660, $659.99. These may come down a little bit in price if you hold out maybe a month or two. But that's really what they've been running. Now, you can get an EVGA one for the same price, or uh, MSI. Um, the Zotac uh, Amp, it's actually been, I've seen it for uh, $645 before. So if you want to get a cheaper card and you like the design of that, definitely get that. But that is what I would get if I was doing any type of 4K gaming. I would really push into that. Uh, you may be able to get maybe a couple 780 Ti's or 780's and do them SLI and uh, not have any problem with 4K gaming. I really don't recommend dual cards, but that's an option you can go about. Uh, same thing, you can get a couple maybe 970's or you can get a couple 390X's and crossfire those bad boys. For $800, you're going to get just about all you're going to need for 4K gaming. You should really be able to, to uh, get some good performance out of that. That's it guys, there's many other graphics card options out there. Those are just a few that I researched uh, frames per second. I mainly use PC Per and Enantech to actually look at these cards and go through the reviews of them and see how they actually performed. So that's what I'd recommend. Uh, let me know if you guys like this video. You guys know how to do that. If not, let me know. Hopefully you guys uh, found this a little bit useful. If you have any questions, definitely leave some comments below and I will answer those as I can. Thanks everyone for watching and I will see you guys next time.